Hey everybody, this is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. Let me let me fix the camera here a little bit. We've got a special guest today. Um, you know, I keep talking to somebody. <laughs> it doesn't seem like they like me very much. And you know, I think that I'm just not classy enough for some uh for some antiques people. I think that's probably a fact and probably just something I'm gonna have to live with. Um you know, this is kinda like trailer park antiques channel you know we <laughs> we are not we are not overly classy people you know I, uh, I like to think I can hold my own in a civilized conversation but but you know rules for their own sake and you know just people people wanting to be in charge of things that you know talk about it this way and listen to what I have to say about it it all bothers me it all it all drives me insane I like to think that um you know, coming to my channel is kind of like driving through a trailer park and seeing a Lamborghini parked there. Like, what? <laughs> Why is that there? How did he get that? Uh, yeah, it's just a, it's just a whole odd assortment of things, isn't it? My, my little channel here. Let me show you something super fancy. We got 50 subscribers. You, you must all like listening to me talk about this stuff and seeing this stuff. So. So here's something extra special, okay? Note the cloisons on the counter enamel. They're just swirly gigs. Um, this is, I believe, an early Meiji era piece. And it has a very special subject matter. It's a very special and unique dish I'm gonna add. Let me show you let me show you a side profile real quick. You see how deep that dish is? I mean it's it's like a plate, but I mean, he's a he's a deep fella. Now, he does have a slight condition issue here. Um, let me find it. He's got a little he's got a little flattened out piece right here. It doesn't really look like he was dropped. It looks like he was squished. I think someone squished him briefly. It's a little uh little edging to that lip right there there's a chip oh there we go okay you see how that's kind of just pressed out a little bit somehow this bowl just got slightly deformed and he's got one chip right on the back here but fortunately <laughs> fortunately the main art is still completely intact and let me show you that do you see that gorgeous purple? Thank goodness for Japan of old, because nobody else in the world got to have colors like this. I mean, you know, purple was for royalty and super expensive in other places. Now, in Japan, this wouldn't have been cheap. <laughs> I'm sure of it. I am 100% positive that this would never have been for a uh, poor person's home until now until now best I can afford antiques channel got a hold of it some how alright now let's look at this and just think about it the way the artist meant us to okay <clears throat> now we'll get a little closer here now that's a very special border um, this fence here I, you know, I don't know if it's supposed to represent anything. I, it reminds me of Chinese art. So I think, I think that this is, uh, from the early days of the Meiji era, Meiji era Cloisonne revival, um, in Japan. So like 1830, a samurai, uh, found a piece of Cloisonne from China and he took it apart and, uh, figured out how to make it and, and by like, 1838 I want to say he was making cloisonne uh, pretty steadily so that led to like a dawn of um, cloisonne and invention of cloisonne uh, techniques and different enamels and stuff in Japan and that is why Meiji era Japan is considered to be the golden age of cloisonne <clears throat> so their first pieces were pretty direct copies of Chinese pieces. 
Now I sort of feel like this fence here, this border, is a somewhat indirect copy of a uh, Chinese border. I'm not positive about that, but this is the only time I've seen this border on a Japanese piece. Um, I believe the swirls on the back are a pretty early thing. Um, I think this is an early Meiji era piece, possibly, um, I don't want to say copying a Chinese piece, but, you know, inspired by. That, that sounds more appropriate. So what we've got here is a beautiful, let me, um, let me bring our light back around, make sure we're getting all this. What we've got here is a beautiful, beautiful little scene of, um, let's, uh, let's go from the outside in, okay? We've got a beautiful little scene. Now I think these are insects, and I think they're uh, maybe mayflies. I'm not exactly sure what kind of uh, insects they have in Japan, but I think these stylized insects around the outside edge here are just awesome. I mean, that is the that is supremely cool. I, whoever designed this and just gave them those little squiggly tails and you know, that's a pretty perfect representation of a bunch of insects flying around this, okay? So then we've got the spider in the central, uh, as the central character, right? Now, it looks like his web is incomplete. It looks like it's uh, not perfectly designed yet. I wonder, are we having a tough time with focus? I hope we're, uh... No, it seems like it's focusing. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Let's pan in on him just a little bit more, huh? Get him straightened out. I'm sorry, everybody. You know, you know how difficult this is for me. So, we've got the spider as the central character here, and uh, right down here we've got a bird. Now, somebody very smart to me said, or somebody very smart said to me uh, that this is a. Uh, sorry, apparently somebody's mowing their lawn next to my house. That's fine. We're just going to keep doing this because I think my microphone's pretty much going to handle it. So, you've got this bird here. And he's watching the spider. Now, is that bird going to decide to eat the spider? Or is he just going to watch the spider? And the spider will finish his web and in turn gain a meal of his own. You know, I, you know, it's kind of like um, the unpredictability of life in just one little scenario with three characters. You know, you've got the, you've got the fly, you've got the spider, and you've got the bird. So yeah, I think that's a, that's a very astute observation and yeah I just I just love this thing I think it's early Meiji era and we're gonna look at some of this wire work here because it's just fantastic and look at these uh, look at these wires for this portion here now you see it's not exactly lined in either it, it kind of bleeds over there's a little bit of bleeding in here you can see uh, right there and stuff there's a little bit of pitting so, I mean, all of this is kind of evidence of a uh, somewhat unrefined technique. You know, they didn't have the technology to, to perfectly line the cloisons with uh, enamel and stuff. And their enamel had some uh, firing issues when, when uh, they cooked it. You'll notice that today, you know, if you see a modern piece of cloisonne, there's no pitting on it whatsoever. They've figured that out. I mean, it's, uh, if you don't see pitting, it's almost definitely modern. I love, absolutely love this border. I mean, look at how neat that is up close. Let me see if I can't, uh, just handle it a little bit. I got gloves on and everything. I think we're, I think we're cooking. Move this out of the way. So, yeah. I mean, in the glare, I mean, how gorgeous are all those cloisons? I love the shading for the flowers. Look at that beautiful bird. I love to show you guys this stuff in the, uh, in the glare, because then you can really see what I'm talking about and why it would have been difficult and why it's still amazing and impressive and beautiful. I mean, this would have been beautiful no matter what it was, you know, if it was painted, if it was, uh, if it was anything, this would have been a gorgeous thing, but but it's cloisonne, so somebody decided to do it the most difficult and time-consuming way they possibly could have, just to say, you know, look at what I can do. 
look at the thing I can make. And I love that this, uh, this kind of greenish, maybe that sort of turquoise color on the outside, and then goes into it. Well, that's actually a turquoise color, isn't it? So this is going to call, we're going to call that like just a green, maybe like sea green into a turquoise and then into a purplish blue. I mean, what an incredible thing. You guys with me on this? This is good stuff, isn't it? This is our trailer park Lamborghini. <laughs> One of many. One of many. Austin has quite a collection of trailer park supercars now, doesn't he? I hope you guys like this stuff. I love showing it to you. I love talking to you about it. I appreciate you tuning into my channel even though I'm not a consummate professional and you know I don't know how to talk about some of this stuff. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm definitely not an expert on anything. But you know I think if you're earnest and you try hard and you actually enjoy these things then you've got room to talk about them. You know if you if you just come in here like I know everything about it and this is what it is. You know, I don't, I don't like that. I like being the guy that doesn't know. Because it seems like the more you know about these things, the less you appreciate it when you see a different one or a, or a strange one, you know. People act like they've seen this stuff all the time. And I just haven't, you know. I, I just, I want to see more of it so badly. And really, I hope you guys keep tuning in. I'm going to keep trying to find neat stuff and I really hope I don't let you down. I hope uh, I hope we just keep seeing the most beautiful stuff I've ever seen and we get to keep sharing it together. This is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel celebrating 50 subscribers that actually like listening to me and I like that quite a bit. Everybody have a super nice day.